Hey guys, it's Vicki and today I am here to share with you all the books that I read in the month of January. And I don't know about you guys, but January seemed like it lasted like three years. <laughs> it just dragged on and on and on. And unfortunately, my reading this month was a little bit of a mixed bag. I had two two-star reads, which isn't very typical, and it was just a very up and down, weird kind of month. Not the best way to start 2020, but it's fine. <laughs> so let's go ahead and just dive into my thoughts on these books. So the first book that I completed in January and in the year 2020 was a thriller called The Wives by Taryn Fisher. This was my book of the month pick for December. And this book is about a woman who is in a polygamist marriage. Her husband has two other wives and their relationship is a little bit different than a typical polygamist marriage because these three women do not know each other. They do not associate with each other in any way. And so that is what kind of the basis of the plot is, is that our main character becomes curious about these other women, wants to know more about them, and she figures out a way to meet one of them. And on the sly, she meets this woman. This woman doesn't know who she really is. And she discovers that her relationship with her husband is very different from this other woman's relationship with her husband. And she starts to kind of wonder, is this man who is this man that I'm married to? Uh, it seems like he has some qualities that I'm not aware of and the story just kind of takes off from there. Overall, I thought this was a okay thriller. It definitely was a page turner, especially towards the end. I really wanted to know what was gonna happen and I wanted to see how everything was gonna play out. And so it was suspenseful. Things did get a little crazy, which is always fun in a thriller. The only thing that I, think I had an issue with in this book was that the main twist, which I'm not going to say because it would be spoilery, is a twist that I feel like has been done a lot. It's a twist that, and I don't know if it's because I've, I've been reading a lot more thrillers the last couple of years, but it just seemed like it was something that's already been done. And honestly, something that seems to be, sometimes it seems to be kind of a cop-out, kind of the easy way out with the, with creating a twist in a book. And so the twist was kind of meh for me and kind of knocked the book down a peg a little bit. So, um, but overall, like I said, fast-paced, page-turning, enjoyable, got real dark, especially the last chapter or so, and the way the book ended, I was like, dang. Um, so it was, it was a good time, but like I said, a little bit predictable. So for me, this was a three-star read. And next up came my first two-star read of the month, and this book I read for my local book club, and we are going to be going today to see the film adaptation of this book, well, the most recent one, and that book is The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. So my book club, we will be going to see The Turning later on today. And I'm really hoping that the film is better than the book was because unfortunately this book was not for me. I think the main thing that I didn't like was it was incredibly dry, the writing. And I know it's a classic and you kind of go into classics knowing that the writing is possibly going to be that way. But then again, there are a lot of classics that I've read that I felt the writing was awesome, and this one I just didn't connect with. And also, the main character, and this could be because I was listening to this on audio, I should mention, so I don't know if it was the way that the narrator was reading this character, but she came off to me as incredibly hysterical and annoyingly dramatic. And so I just had a hard time really connecting with her as a character and seeing where she was coming from. For those of you that don't know what The Turn of the Screw is about, it's about a woman who uh, gets a position where she goes to this manor, very isolated sort of job where she is a caretaker for two young children and she is the only one there with these two kids besides this uh, housekeeper. And she quickly comes across these ghosts that uh, are at the house and she becomes so afraid that these ghosts are corrupting the children, maybe trying to possess the children, 
and so she gets really freaked out and things just kind of go crazy. For me, this book wasn't scary at all, and that doesn't mean that the book, that that's what made the book bad for me, because I can read a book and think it's not scary, but still think it's good. And, but this one is just, I thought the story was boring, and I thought that it just, it just didn't flow for me. I just, I wasn't compelled to pick it up. I wasn't interested, and like I said, the main character just, she kind of got on my nerves, to be honest. And I felt like in the end, the way the book ended, it just like, it just stopped. And I was like, what? Like, did I miss something? Like, I had to like pick up my phone and like, that's the end, seriously? So I didn't like the ending, the way that it just abruptly ended. And I don't know, I was really looking forward to liking this, but I just didn't. And so yeah, it was a two star read for me. The next book that I completed in January was a buddy read, kind of um, an impromptu buddy read that I did with Lindsay from Lindsay's Little Library. This was our first time buddy reading. We had a great time. I can't wait to buddy read with her again. But she reached out to me because I had put this book on my TBR and she also wanted to read it. And so we thought, hey, let's read it together. So we both read The Great Pretender by Susanna Cahillon or Cahillon. I really should look up how to say that name. I apologize. This is a nonfiction book about this um, experiment that took place in the 70s where this man, this uh, psychologist, and a few of his grad students and a couple other people that he kind of just knew in his inner circle went kind of undercover and tried to get admitted into psychiatric hospitals under the premise that they were insane and kind of see what happens. And the whole kind of premise of the experiment was they had to basically be themselves except there was like a certain prompt that they had to say when they were being interviewed to be admitted that they were hearing voices. Other than that, they pretty much had to just kind of be themselves and once they got in, they had to figure out how to get themselves out. And it was an interesting experiment because all of the people that were, were admitted, they were admitted, um, except for one, were diagnosed with schizophrenia in one shape or form. The, le the other woman was, I believe, manic. She was diagnosed with manic depression. So the whole book is kind of asking the question of, like, how do you know if somebody is sane versus insane? How do you gauge that? How do you know that? Because these people were normal people who were doing an experiment but managed to get into the, these hospitals and so it was a really interesting look at that whole topic and the thing is about halfway through the book it kind of took a turn that I wasn't expecting it to take which even though I wasn't expecting it I enjoyed because when I read books like this especially books by journalists where they go into a book expecting to write a certain type of book but the story kind of carries them somewhere else that's exactly what happened here in this book and I really enjoyed that because you could tell even in the writing of the book that Susanna Cahillon was like, this isn't the book I meant to write, but hey, this is where we're going. And I won't say what it is because it is kind of spoilery and it is kind of fun to go into it not knowing what that turn is going to be. Um, so yeah, this was a pretty good read. I enjoyed it. It had a lot of background information into kind of the history of psychology and psychiatry, which for me, I really liked because I don't have any background in that, but maybe people that have studied a lot of um, psychology and sociology might have been a little bored by that, like, hey, uh, yeah, I've already, I already know about this, I've already been through this, like in school or whatever, but for me, it was interesting and it gave me a lot of good background information so that when we got into the the main meat of the story, this experiment, it just made a lot more sense. The book obviously also shines a lot of light on kind of the challenges that the f that field face um, and the challenges that have gone throughout history and that continue through today. I wouldn't say it's necessarily an anti-psychiatry book, but you kind of do get that vibe that she has a little bit of a negative connotation to it, especially considering that she wrote a memoir a few years back uh, about her own experience with misdiagnoses with a psychological disorder that it turns out she didn't have. Um, which now, side note, I do want to read that memoir because she references it a lot in this book and so I want to kind of know 
what it was all about. So Lindsay and I actually want to try to buddy read that one together as well. So yeah, overall this was a very well researched book. Uh, there's a ton of notes and an index in the back. So you can tell that she really did her homework. She really worked to get as much information as she could and I appreciate that um, going into a nonfiction read that you know that the writer was doing all that they could to give you everything. And so for that, I really did appreciate it. Uh, there were a few chapters that were a little dry, especially I think it was the last chapter was really boring and a real slog to get through, unfortunately. Not the best way to end a book like this, but you know, it happens. So I ended up giving this three and a half stars. I don't normally do half star ratings, but I decided that be I was kind of torn. It wasn't quite a three, but it wasn't quite a four. And because of the research and uh, I did like the writing and everything in the topic itself, I decided to go with a three and a half star. Next up, I completed a historical fiction novel, a beloved one, I believe, by many. And it is the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society by Mary Ann Schaefer and Annie Barrows. This is a World War II historical fiction. It is an epist epistolary novel, which means it is told through letters. That was probably my favorite part about this book. Um, but before I get to that, the plot of this book is that there is this writer named Juliet and she's living in London and she is looking for kind of a new topic for her next book and she gets this letter from this guy who lives on this little island called Guernsey, it's in the English Channel and he wants to kind of talk about what the island experienced during World War II because they were occupied by the Germans and kind of wants to share their experiences and how they uh, came to in, invent um, this book club basically on the island in a way to um, trick the Germans and to just kind of find some sort of fun thing to do during the war. So yeah, like I said, my favorite thing about this book was that it was told through letters and it made me so wish that we still write or wrote, that we would still write letters today because it's such a dead art form unfortunately now it's like we send text messages and things and it's just not the same as sitting down writing a letter you know putting a stamp on it going to the post office all that and it's just such a lovely it's just such a lovely thing and it's just so represented the time period here um and so i really really liked that part of the book the story was also really good and despite it having its kind of dark times and hard times which you're going to find in a in a war novel. Um, it was also very cozy and lighthearted and I think it was because the characters were that way and there was a lot of just a lot of like coziness and um, the characters were so interesting and diverse and yeah it just all around despite being a, a World War II novel was was cozy in a way. So yeah I really enjoyed it. Um, it. It lived up to the hype for me and I gave it four out of five stars. Next up is my second two star read for the month and I'm gonna try to like keep my thoughts concise here because I don't want to get ranty but I really really didn't like this book and that is The Awakening by Kate Chopin. Um, the only reason I think I completed this book was because I finally had to listen to the audiobook while reading the physical book and the audiobook was good if I was also reading along with it and I think it was because the narrator which I don't um, remember her name I'll try to put it here so that you guys know which narrator which one I listened to but um she did a really good job of of capturing the that like Louisiana accent which I think is a unique accent to that region of the United States and I I liked that part of the narration and it kind of kept me going because this story was, <sighs> um, <sighs> how do I begin? <laughs> okay, so first of all, let me tell you what it's about. It's about this woman named Edna Pontillier who, uh, in the beginning of the book, she is on vacation with her family. They're on the Gulf Coast and she is not very happy in her life. Um, she feels like she's in a loveless marriage. Uh, she doesn't really seem to be all that interested in being a mother. Uh, just everything, the society's pressures are making her very unhappy and she meets this man who she quickly 
falls in love with, which I would say was more like obsession or infatuation, I don't know, but he awakens this whatever in her where she wants to kind of start going against uh, everything that is expected of her and then it just goes from there. My biggest problem with this book was it was incredibly boring. I felt like the story was just going nowhere and Edna is one of the most selfish, annoying characters that I've ever read. There, I'm saying it. I know I'm going to have people come at me and be like, you just didn't get it, Vicky. No, I googled a lot after reading this book. I was reading spark notes. I was doing everything because I'm thinking like, what am I missing here? Why do people love this? What's so great about this book? And I'm sorry, I just don't see what's so great about this book. The writing was boring. I didn't like the writing. Edna is an awful character. She's incredibly selfish. And I just, <laughs> I just did not like this. And then the ending, if this is okay, because a lot of the reading I did, people were like, oh, this is a like feminist novel because Edna is going against all these like societal norms of the time period. Women were so oppressed in the late 1800s, and yes, they were absolutely a lot of, and yes, a lot of women were forced to marry men that they didn't love and have children with them because of, because it was financially, you know, responsible or whatever. Um, but the way this book ends, I felt like, how is that empowering women or anything like that. And I don't want to say what this what the end is because it'd be spoilery, though I think a lot of people know how this book ends. I knew how the book ended going into the book, uh, but I didn't have any context. And now that I have the context, I thought it was really stupid and it made me dislike Edna even more. And yeah, I just didn't understand how she was, Edna was trying to fight the system or like whatever to the system but she's still doing it on her husband's dime going off and painting and having affairs and whatever and just dumping her kids with her mother-in-law because she can't be bothered with that it just bothered me that I think that you can also go out and try to you know have some self-discovery and try to um, find ways to make yourself happy again and to be um, and to maybe to say F you to the system, but also, you know, take care of your responsibilities because you're an adult. I felt like Edna was acting like a child in this and I just, just done with this. I'm just done with it. I did not like it. I initially gave it two stars, but I think now that I'm talking about it, I think I'm going to dock it to a one star because I disliked it that much. So yeah, I cannot recommend The Awakening and I didn't like it and it was a one star read. So moving on. So after reading The Awakening and just hating the world. <laughs> I decided I wanted to do some rereads um, because this series is coming out on Netflix based on a graphic novel series that I absolutely loved and so I decided I want to reread the graphic novel series. So in January I reread the first two volumes of Lock and Key by Joe Hill and Gabriel Rodriguez. So I read um, volume one which is Welcome to Lovecraft and volume two which is Head Games. And this um, graphic novel series deals with a family that after a terrible tragedy move to Lovecraft, uh, Massachusetts I believe. Um, where their father grew up and they go to his childhood home which is called Key House. And when they get there, they find that there's all these strange keys kind of lying about and they figure out really quickly that they're magical. And each key has like a special magical thing that it does. And then the story just goes from there. It's really cool, really imaginative. Also parts where it's kind of spooky, kind of graphic, kind of violent, but I really loved this series and because it's been such a long time since I read it, I wanted to reread it before watching the Netflix series. So yeah, I went ahead and got through the first two volumes. Um, I definitely gave volume one five stars, which is what I gave it originally. And I decided to also give volume two five stars upon a second read because in this one, I, I forgot how awesome the illustrations are and it's tied to what the key does, and I don't wanna say, cause it'd be spoilery, but those illustrations in particular, those those page layouts were just super awesome. I just really loved them. And so I decided to up it to a five. Yeah, this is a great series and I highly recommend it, especially if you wanna watch the Netflix series, try to get your hands on these first. 
um, because they're awesome. And then I finished off the month by listening to another audiobook, and that one was The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman. This is the first book in the His Dark Materials trilogy, although now there's a fourth book, but it's a prequel, right? So maybe I should say His Dark Materials series. And this audiobook was so awesome. It was a full cast, so it was narrated by Philip Pullman, but then all the different characters were voiced by different, you know, different voice actors, and it was so good. It was such a good audiobook. Highly recommend if you want to read this, try to get your hands on the audiobook because it was really enjoyable. Um, and this one is about a girl named Lyra who lives in this world that is very much like ours but it's got a little bit of differences. The main difference is that everybody walks around with a demon. And this demon is in the form of an animal and it's basically like your soul living outside of your body, like in its own form outside of your body. And I thought just off the bat, I thought that that concept was really cool, really interesting. Um, but anyways, Lyra is a young girl and she is living in at a college and she spies on her uncle who um is there for like a meeting and she kind of spies on the meeting and discovers that there's this like dust and that's all i'll say about it about the dust um because she doesn't really know what it means either like huh what's dust and at the same time there is this group of people that the young kids call the gobblers who are kidnapping children and nobody knows why they're just taking them and and then taking them north and they have no idea what's going on why they're taking them so when one of her really good friends goes missing she decides to go on an adventure and figure out what's going on and this story was very action-packed there was a lot of just it, it just it, the pacing was good there was a lot going on um, it was definitely an adventure story and I have to admit though by the end I still had a lot of questions just about the world and things that I imagine will be explained in the subsequent books um, and there's also a lot of kind of subtext that I wasn't anticipating. This is a very deep book considering it's a middle grade novel and I have to admit I'm not sure I completely understood it all. So I enjoyed it. I loved the world. Like I said, I loved the whole concept of having these demons that are so much a part of you and uh, that part was really cool. And like I said, lots of cool just characters in the story. But I was also a little bit confused sometimes, I'm not going to lie. So uh, I don't know if or when I will com complete this series, though I did enjoy this book. I don't know if I'm going to continue with the series or when, but it was good and I would recommend it. Um, and I gave it, what did I give it? I gave it three out of five stars. All right, guys, so those are all the books that I read in January. Like I said, it was kind of all over the place. It was a little bit of a weird month. Um, honestly, I'm kind of hoping that February goes a little better for me. Um, I'm going to, I didn't mention it in my February TBR, but I'm going to continue reading the Lock and Key series. I'm hoping in the next week to read the rest of them. So that's going to be a good time because I know I'm going to love those. And yeah, so hopefully February is a better reading month. Um, I hope that you guys had a good January, that it wasn't too hard on you. Because let's face it, January has been a tough month. It just, it seems like it always is, but yeah. So please let me know down below what your favorite read of January was, because I would love to know. And I hope that you guys are all doing well, and I'll chat with you very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.